Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Metal Magdalene with Jet right here on Metal Messiah Radio. Tonight, I have a special guest with me. I have Richard Christie of Charred Walls of the Dam. Welcome to the show, Richard. Hey, great to talk to you. Um, shall we talk about the uh, the fact that I'm wearing a diaper again uh, that we were just talking about? The, the, uh, some interviews. <laughs> that might be a little too much information for the fans right now. A lot of them are probably eating dinner, having some iced tea or lemonade, and might not want to really think about that right now. <laughs> hey, diapers are metal. If you don't want to miss a song and you're at, you know... At a concert, a diaper comes in handy. So is that what you're going to be doing at some of your shows? When you go out and play, are you going to be selling some uh, metal diapers at the merch booth? You know, you know what? Actually, our second album, I think the first thousand copies that fans got a signed diaper from me. So, ah, All right, <laughs> yeah. so you've already been there and done that. <laughs> <laughs> Good idea, though. <laughs> so, Richard, just to give people a little idea of how old you are, <laughs> when did you first start actually wanting to play drums? Oh, uh, well, yeah, this is definitely going to date me, but uh, it's when uh, I heard Hot for Teacher by Van Halen in 1984. I was 10 years old, and... That, that was the year that they started offering band class at uh, Uniontown Elementary in Kansas, where I live. And it was just perfect timing for me because that summer, uh, between the fourth and fifth grade, I heard Hot for Teacher, thanks to my neighbor Larry Bierbauer, who introduced me to metal. And uh, I hope every metalhead out there has their Larry Bierbauer, their <laughs> friend that got them into metal. And uh, he played me Hot for Teacher, and I was just blown away. I was like, I want to learn how to do that and unfortunately i still haven't learned how to do, play that song that i don't know what the heck alex van halen's doing there i can get pretty close but i don't know that anybody's ever figured out exactly what he's doing in that intro but uh yeah so it's definitely uh you know i gotta give a big shout out to alex van halen <laughs> and now of course you've been in a million different things since then but i think you might be most famous of course besides your whole charred walls of the damn thing for being in death and iced earth but what are some of the other bands and projects that you've been involved with over the years uh well the first kind of real band that i was in was called public assassin and uh, uh when i turned 18 I was supposed to go to community college in Kansas, right near where I grew up. And literally the night before I was supposed to start college, this I got the offer to join this band, Public Assassin. I was a huge fan of theirs because I had heard their demo tape from a, a buddy of mine who had brought it back from Springfield, Missouri. And uh, they the next day they happened to be on their way to an obituary Cannibal Corpse, Agnostic Front, and Malevolent Creation concert at the Outhouse in Lawrence, Kansas. So they stopped in my little, uh, the, the little town of Bronson, Kansas, to audition me at my friend's house. And I decided to just go for broke and move to Springfield, Missouri and join this death metal band. So I played in Public Assassin for three years, and then uh, myself and Steve Childers from Public Assassin, we formed a band called Burning Inside. And uh, you can find a lot of both of those bands on YouTube if you want to go check it out. Uh, but our band Burning Inside decided to move from Springfield, Missouri to Orlando in, uh, in 1996. And uh, I soon met Chuck Schuldiner at the Altamont Mall in Orlando, Florida, which was like a dream come true, even getting to meet Chuck, because <laughs> I was a huge Death fan. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I moved to Florida, just kind of in the back of my mind, I had this little dream that, wow, what, what if I get to meet Chuck and I get to audition for Death? And, you know, but then, uh, then I would think, oh, that'll never happen, you know. It's, it's too much of a, a dream. Uh, but then, you know, I did get the chance in 1997 to to audition for Chuck and join Death. So it really, literally was a dream come true. And uh, so, yeah, and then uh, I played, in, I toured actually with the band Incantation because I became friends, really good friends with John McEntee because uh, his band would come through and, and tour in Springfield, Missouri when I lived there. And uh, they they needed a drummer for one tour and I went on tour with them and had a freaking blast. It, <laughs> Incantation was, I mean, they were one of the heaviest, most brutal death metal bands ever, but we had so much fun on tour and had so many laughs. 
uh, it's uh, it was an awesome tour. So uh, got to do that, and then uh, then uh, in the year 2000, I got to join Ice Earth, uh, which is also one of my favorite bands. I've been a huge fan of theirs since uh, the early 90s, and so I got to join them. And right away, I got to go on tour with Demons and Wizards, which was uh, John from Ice Earth and Hanzi from uh, Blind Guardian. It was their side project. Mm-hmm. I love their albums are awesome. That first album especially, like I still listen to it all the time. It was so fun touring with them. So um yeah, that's some of the, the, the bands that I've got been lucky enough to, to tour with and, and play on albums for. And now didn't you do like a little brief stint in Asheron too? I did, yeah, like in ninety six, ninety seven and ninety eight I was playing with them and actually the first time, I have to thank uh, Vince, Vincent Crowley, because the first time I ever flew in a plane was uh, to go play the Milwaukee Metal Fest in 1990, was it 90? It was either 96 or 97. Uh, I think it was 96, maybe, with Asheron, and it was awesome. It was such a cool, uh, I'm so thankful I got the experience of Milwaukee Metal Fest, because back in the day, that... That was like the big, biggest metal fest in in the U.S. Mm-hmm. and uh, it was awesome. And uh, I got to play, I think, two different Milwaukee metal fests with Asheron, and we got to do a we did a Mexican tour with Dark Funeral in the year two thousand, which was awesome. Uh, we had a lot of fun, although we stopped at this roadside uh, uh, festival where they were serving cooked goat, and uh, it didn't agree with me very good, <laughs> and. Uh, it might have been a little accident <laughs> on the tour bus, but we were tour- it's fine too. We were touring in an old uh, junky school bus and it ended up falling apart during the tour. I think literally <laughs> the tires fell off or something while we were driving down the road. We had to figure out some way to get to the next show. But uh, yeah, I had a blast playing in Asheron, and uh, and Vince is an awesome guy. He uh, I think he's living in Ohio now. Mm-hmm. I just got the newest Asheron on vinyl, which is awesome. And okay, so now here we are to talk about Charred Walls of the Dam. Now tell us a little bit, a brief history on Charred Walls of the Damned, uh, Richard. Well, um, you know, I've, I've been playing guitar for quite a while, probably since around 1992, and I've always been writing riffs and recording them and never really did anything with them. And finally about... I don't know, around 2006, 2007, I thought maybe I'll start assembling some of these riffs and maybe just trying to write some metal songs because, um, you know, it had been a couple years since I had been in Ice Earth and I was getting the itch to, to play some metal again. And so I wrote a bunch of songs and I thought they were they were pretty decent. And I played them for Jason Sukoff and he liked them and and uh, Jason Sukoff is a guitar player. He lives in Orlando, and he runs Audio Hammer Studios. I've known him since 1999, and we actually have been writing music together for a long time. We we wrote some music back when I lived in Florida that ended up being becoming a cartoon called Majestic Loincloth. It's a heavy metal comedy Viking rock opera. You can look it up on YouTube, and uh, we did it with uh, Tit Mouse Animation, who does the the Metalocalypse. Death Clock uh, cartoon, mm-hmm. and so I've been writing songs with Jason for a long time, and he was the first one I thought of for guitar for this band, and he liked the songs, and then, you know, I was in Iced Earth with uh, Ripper Owens, Tim Ripper Owens, and he was the first singer that I thought of that I'd love to have in the band. He was up for it, and then I asked Steve DiGiorgio, who played bass with me in Iced Earth, and he also played on uh, the demos for Death, Sound, and Perseverance album. And so I've known him since about 97, and uh, luckily everybody was real cool and just said, yeah, we'll, we'll be in your band, and, uh, and uh, you know, the rest is history. So we've been around since about 2009. Okay, so you were just about to release your third album, I believe, Creatures Watching Over the Dead, uh, your last one being Cold Winds on Timeless Days, nice short titles of these albums. <laughs> So how did you go about writing this one musically, and how did you personally approach this one as far as writing your drum parts? Because the pre-release song sounds like you approached it pretty aggressively, Richard. <laughs> well, um, yeah, you know, I want to, I like, I always liked bands, like there's a band called Rat Child America that I grew up loving, 
and they always had albums with so many different types of songs. They'd go from like a super fast, brutal thrash song to a song that had a reggae beat in it, and I always loved that, and, and that's what I wanted with Charred Walls, you know, I, I always want to have a couple songs on there with some blast beats and some crazy drumming, because that's what I grew up uh, practicing to, I mean, I grew up, when I heard Morbid Angel, Authors of Madness, it just blew my mind, I'm a huge Pete Sandoval fan, and I, you know, I always want to try to throw in a few blast beats on our albums, just kind of as a tribute to the, the death metal drummers that I love, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, but then at the same time, we have some really, really slow songs, some almost uh, like D.O. type or Black Sabbath type songs. And, uh, and you know, when I'm writing the, the music, it I don't really go into it looking for that. I mm -hmm. kind of, it just kind of comes out of me from being a fan of so many different types of metal bands and also just from me being a fan of people like John Carpenter and I grew up listening to jazz. Like, I still listen to Miles Davis all the time and Jocko Pastorius and people like that. So I, I think I'm pretty lucky that I'm into so, so many different kinds of music because uh, it definitely, in our music, we try to have a lot of different tempos. And, you know, we got the crazy stuff, but then we'll have the more mellow stuff, too. And now nine tracks on the album. You recently pre-released a song called The Soulless. Oh, what have been some of the early reactions to the track? Uh, really positive. Mm -hmm. People love it, and and which I'm super excited about. Um, you know, we Brian Slagle picked that song to be the first one that we would put out because I always put my trust in the hands of Brian Slagle because uh, you know he runs Metal Blade Records, our label, and and I've been a fan of his since I used to order uh, the Metal Massacre cassettes through the mail when I was a kid. So he's like one of my heroes, and he. Uh, you know, he discovered Slayer and Metallica and all these legendary bands. So when it comes time to do stuff for our album, like release songs, I just say, "Hey, Brian, you're you're the metal, <laughs> the metal god. I'll put it in your hands." And he he thought the Solace would be a really good first song to put out. And I agreed with him because it's real in your face and brutal. It gets right to the point, and uh, it's got a pretty catchy chorus. And uh, yeah, people seem to be really digging it. It's uh, I'm really happy. Now, are you guys going to have any time for touring to follow this up? Uh, I hope so. I hope so. <laughs> you know, it depends on everybody's schedule, and and we're going to definitely try. I'm thinking probably some festival dates. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what we did for the last album. We got to play Orion Fest with Metallica, which was freaking awesome. And <laughs> Lars even introduced us, which <laughs> blew my oh, mind. Boy. I was like, I couldn't believe he was standing there in front of me while I was getting ready to play drums. It was awesome. So, uh, yeah, we're really hoping to do some festivals and uh, maybe some short tours, you know, just because of all, our, all of our schedules. And uh, I think Steve DiGiorgio is getting ready to go on tour with Testament, mm -hmm. and, and Tim is touring a lot as well. Jason's busy at Audio Hammer Studios. Uh, you know, we'll try to get something lined up for sure. So were you happy with the final outcome, and do you think that this is the best charred album to date? Uh, yes, and yes. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I, I'm, I still freak out when I listen to this album. I think out of our three albums, this is the one that I've listened to the most after we recorded it. Ah. Uh, I, just, I really love listening to it. I think the production is amazing. I think the songwriting and, and everybody, you know, Tim and Jason, Steve's performances are incredible. Uh, I'm really happy with my drum sound. I think I got a really natural, powerful sound. And, uh, you know, thanks to Jason being the producer and the engineer. And, uh, yeah, I think it's uh, it's our best album, and, and I'm really, really super happy with it. I'm really proud of it, and I can't wait for, you know, on September 23rd for everybody else to hear it. So Creatures Watching Over the Dead out September 23rd via Metal Blade Records. And, Richard, thank you for taking the time uh, to talk with us tonight about the band and what's going on with you guys. Thank you so much for having me. I really, really appreciate it.